Hello again everybody, this is John Anglin with BestPriceNutrition.com. Today we're reviewing MuscleTech Nitro Amino FX Pro Series, right? It's Pro Series. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Pro series. There's a lot of adjectives in the name. Um, basically what it is, is a, it's a BCAA supplement where they added arginine and a couple other amino acids to it. So um, I think that it's mainly going to be targeted toward people who are going to take it pre-workout because of the arginine added to it. Mm -hmm. So it's technically like a pre-workout su supplement. Um, it doesn't have any stimulants in it. Mm -hmm. Um, we've done a lot of other videos on BCAA, so we're going to give you kind of the cliff notes on, you know, where and when BCAAs can be helpful. Um, so, Glenn, let's run through the ingredients, and then we'll hit into the, uh, you know, we'll get into some of the details on each of the ingredients. You know, start with the macronutrients and break it down from there. Yeah, you've got. Uh, um, it does start with. Uh, so you got 70 calories. There's no fat. There's uh, four grams of carbs. No sugar. Um, and then there's some electrolytes they add to it. Uh, but the bulk of it is what they call their Nitro Amino FX Blend. Um, the first is their uh, BCAA, uh, Mega Dose BCAA Matrix, Leucine, Valine, or Valine and Isoleucine. There's 8 grams or 8,000 milligrams of that. So you're getting 8 grams of the three uh, BCAAs. And then they have RG Pro, their pre-workout pump amplifier. There's 3 grams of L-Arginine. And then Glutapro, a specialty amino complex, uh, 2 1,500 milligrams of glutamine and taurine. So that's the bulk of the supplement. Yeah, so they're just using some fancy names <clears throat> for each of the blends, and then within them there's certain ingredients. Um, it's a little bit of an improvement for some of Muscle Tech's other products in the sense that, you know, they're not giving you a, a, a proprietary blend of like 50 ingredients, which, you know, is always <clears throat> um, hard to figure out. So we can get a pretty good idea of how much of each um, ingredient is in here. Uh, now with BCAAs, we've talked about them before. They're pretty popular, and BCAAs are very rich in whey and casein. Those are really good sources of BCAAs. Um, and do you want to touch on why somebody would want extra BCAAs? Yeah, if you're on a hypocaloric diet, meaning you're not taking in a lot of calories, you're not getting a lot of uh, amino acids from protein, um, that's where these will be beneficial because um, you're not getting a lot of protein in, and, and you want to stay in, in a state of anabolism or you want to be building protein. And when you're not getting in enough protein or enough calories, uh, you're, you're not able to do that. So yeah. by taking a branch chain amino acid supplement, during times that you're not eating a lot, hypochloric diet, it could help stave up catabolism, or catabolism, however you say it, um, and it could help stimulate what's called the mTOR pathway, which is a pathway that, that uh, starts the process of building proteins or increasing protein synthesis. Yeah, it's the chemical signal. And I'd say it's, it's, it's less to do with just how much protein you're taking, just the fact that if you don't take in enough calories, calories. your body can end up using protein for energy. Mm -hmm. So the other things that uh, activate the mTOR pathway are carbohydrates. You know, mm -hmm. carbohydrates will also do that for, for you too. So if you're taking in a bunch of calories, it's really not necessary to supplement yeah. extra BCAAs. But like Len said, if you are, in a, a, you know, a hypocaloric, you're trying to watch yourself diet-wise, you're really <clears throat> paying attention to that, and you don't want to take in carbohydrates um, to the point, you know, you're, you're trying to burn fat and get lean. That's where BCAAs can help and help stave off, you know, breaking down muscle for energy. So. That's really where they'll shine. You know, that, that's not most people. If you're, if you're taking good whey, casein, you're getting enough calories. Mm -hmm. there's, it's really not necessary to supplement. Getting enough bread to change with the whey. Yeah, you're, you're going you're gonna to have it covered there. So um, Next is arginine. And in, in this product, and in, in most products, you'll see it's, it's marketed to increase nitric oxide levels. Uh, you know, we've covered that before. If we, if we were to look it up in a textbook, you, you would see that there's clearly a pathway that arginine can lead to increased nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide is what dilates blood vessels, it opens them up, so that way you get that pump, mm -hmm. so it's always talked about. But the thing is, is that it's rate limiting, your body's going to break down the excess arginine, because your body wants to maintain balanced homeostasis, so it's not going to allow your blood vessels just be pumped and dilated beyond, you know, or just, you know, yeah, there's, there's just a point yeah. at which it's not going to happen. So it, it makes sense in theory, but in, in practice it's just not been proven or demonstrated to increase pump, if you will. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go to the next, next Yeah, uh, glutamine and taurine. Um, glutamine is a very popular amino acid. It's the most abundant amino acid in the body. Um, a lot of what the you know people have said, it, it helps with recovery, protein synthesis. But all the research done on it has shown that it, it really doesn't. Um, the problem with it is that your intestinal lining is made up of almost all glutamine. So a lot of glutamine gets taken up there and stays there. It doesn't make it into the bloodstream to be used for that. So if you're a person who has digestive issues or you have trouble rebuilding your, your lining, your intestines, your colon, glutamine might be beneficial. Uh, but in terms of a muscle repair 
or um, muscle soreness. Glutamine just has, it's, it doesn't have the research behind it in humans to show that it does do that. Yeah, there was some on endurance runners and stuff, but like Len said, it's, it's, it's conditionally essential, yeah. I think is the word that's used, because your body does use it. It's the most abundant amino acid in the body. So in other words, the proteins that make up structures in your body use a lot of glutamine, but your body can also make it from other amino acids. Yeah. So the, uh, the, the link between performance enhancement and supplementing extra glutamine is not there. There's some evidence that it helps with endurance athletes who do long you know, marathons and super marathons, but even that is still preliminary. So supplementing extra glutamine, again, if you're taking in good proteins, some egg, whey, casein, you're eating meats, fish, things like that, you're going to get plenty of it there. So, And other amino acids that your body can use to make it. So, uh, Next up is taurine. Yeah, taurine. Taurine's in a lot of uh, pre-workout energy products. You've seen a lot of uh, energy drinks that you, you can buy in like the supermarkets and things like that. Um, there's some research on taurine to show it can help like endurance athletes and, and power output. But all of it's inconclusive. It doesn't really have a, um, a lot of what's shown is that it can help with possibly lowering heart rate or lowering blood pressure. Um, and they, they're, they're thinking is that maybe that might be of some benefit to someone who's doing high intensity exercise. Yeah, some of the cardiac parameters improve. Possibly the performance enhancement, like you said, has been shown. Mm -hmm. I think there was one, like one week, it was a seven day study actually, that showed that it increased VO2 max, mm -hmm. but nothing's been done beyond that. And that's why you're going to find it in a lot of the energy drinks. Yeah. Because of that. That notion. A lot so. of those studies also used a pretty high dosage. I've seen yeah. some with eight grams a day, and they're only giving you 2.5 grams of glutamine and taurine combined. So you know you're you're a ways away from that eight grams. That yeah, was and, and there's it, and it's not going to be uh, encoded into proteins or enzymes because there's some a genetic code on that's lacking in taurine. So that would be its main use. It would be why they would put that in there. So uh, overall, like we said, it's basically a BCAA supplement with uh, some other aminos added to it. It's not overpriced is usually what we see with uh, muscle tech. This one's not overpriced or anything, but uh, so if you're going to use it as a BCA supplement, somebody with a hypochloric diet, I think that's somebody who can see some benefit from it. Mm -hmm. If you're not, it's it's really not necessary. There's not much in here that you know you're not going to get in your proteins and stuff. So you have that covered. So yeah. uh, so if you guys like the video, you can rate it at the bottom. There's a thumb up, thumb down underneath the video. You can also post comments. We're more than happy to answer them. Also check us out at facebook.com slash bestpricenutrition. We appreciate you watching. Thank you. Thank you.